Hi, my name is Sean O'Brien and I'm from Agilent Technologies. I'm here today at Cascade Sciences to talk to you about the Agilent AX65 Diffusion Pump. This is a high vacuum pump that works in pair with a backing pump. The backing pump attaches to the four line and deals with the large gas load at rough vacuum. As this is a high vacuum pump, this will have more pumping speed in the high vacuum range. For example, the IDP7 will give you about 2.5 liters of second pumping speed, and this AX65 gives you 65 liters per second of pumping speed when you're in the high vacuum region. It is still necessary to back the pump with a vane or a scroll pump when you're in high vacuum. This is a KF50 flange that has a special centering ring. This centering ring goes on the exterior and is included in the manual in the bag. Don't throw this out when you get your new box. Now let's talk about the pressures that you can operate this pump at. The four line pressure that you need to have before you can start the pump is going to be 500 millitor. For the inlet, the maximum pressure in a pure path or distillation application is going to be 100 millitor. Since we're running a 100 millitor inlet pressure, we're using the higher wattage heaters, and to pair with those heaters, we're going to be using the Sanovac 5 pump oil. Now when you go to start this pump, you're going to need to account for 7 minutes to get it up to full speed. This pump has a heater at the bottom that will reach over 500 degrees Fahrenheit and you need 7 minutes to reach full temperature. We're going to start off by turning on our backing pump followed by the fan. The fan always needs to be running when the pump is on. Once the fan is on, you can turn the power on to the pump and wait seven minutes. Once you're at operation, the pump can run 24 hours a day. When you're ready to turn your pump off, turn off the power to the pump, the heaters will go off, but you need to keep your fan running for 10 minutes for proper cool down. Since the heater is at over 500 degrees F, you need 10 minutes to get down to an acceptable point where the the fan can go off and you won't overheat your pump. Now if you do need to put oil in your pump after you've emptied it, I'll go over that process with you as well. I'll go over uh, the removal of the jet assembly first. We are going to take our Allen wrench and unscrew the set screw. Once we've cracked it loose, I'll show you a trick. You can grab the threads right here and manually twist them with your fingers to help unscrew them. Once the set screw is removed, you can reach down and pull out this piece. This is spring-loaded so there will always be pressure on the jet assembly. Here we'll pull out the jet assembly. You can see some used diffusion pump oil. It is rather sticky as well as expensive. We'll set this aside. Now I'm going to show you reinstallation. You're going to line up this hole with the four line right here. Now let's talk a little bit about cleaning the inside of your diffusion pump. Diffusion pump oil is very sticky. Ethanol will not cut it, so you're going to have to use acetone. After wiping everything down with acetone, you're going to need to do a final clean with isopropyl alcohol in order to remove the residue. We'll go ahead and install this back in, hold it down, and we're going to tighten this screw back.
grab our Allen key. Now to fill the pump, we can simply pour oil in right through the top. Now we have two different fill lines here. The bottom is the cold fill line which I filled the pump to as the pump is cold when I filled it with oil. When we turn the pump on the oil will heat up and expand. This is the reason that we have a hot fill line here so you can see that the oil level is at the proper height when the pump is operating. Also on the side is a temperature ready switch. This high temperature switch will let the heater know when the pump has reached the appropriate operating temperature and turn the heater off. This switch acts to turn the heater on and off in order to keep it operating in the proper temperature range. Okay, now we've reassembled our pump, filled it with a 30 cc charge of oil, that will be about half the amount of oil that will come in one of these containers as these have 65 cc's, so it's enough to fill your pump twice. We can now go ahead and install it on our system. I hope this video helped you with the cleaning, operating, and oil fill technique for the AX65 diffusion pump. If you need oil or any questions regarding your diffusion pump, please contact Cascade Sciences. Thank you for watching.